Hello everybody and uh, welcome to the Ogwen Valley where I am sulking. Today's not gone very well for me, unfortunately. I've been looking forward to coming here for about three months, ever since lockdown started, basically. And uh, I got in the car very excited and I managed somehow while driving here, the short drive here, to tweak my knee while driving. Seriously, I moved my foot from the accelerator to the brake and somehow in that movement, I've tweaked my knee. And my plan, my original plan, was to go up to the glitters and then I was gonna walk over Devil's Kitchen to a garn and then descend from a garn in the dark, hopefully, after getting, I don't know, a dozen images of sunset. Unfortunately, I can't really do that now because that walk does, in my experience, require two good knees. So yeah, I'm absolutely gutted, to be honest. Um, I'm hoping it's not too bad. It can't be too bad. All I was doing is braking. So uh, hopefully some ice and a couple of days rest We'll um, sort it out. And for the time being, I've just been flying my drone and taking it all in from here, since I can't take it in from up there. Anyway, I was thinking while I was sat here that I could talk you through my, uh, my scouting method, I suppose, uh, because I'm not gonna be taking all that many photos today, I don't think. Uh, what I mean by scouting method is that most photographers, I'd imagine, including myself, uh, like to have some kind of database of images or image opportunities. So when we go out and we see somewhere that we think is a good spot for a photo, but maybe we've not seen it uh, in its best conditions, which is pretty much always the case, to be honest. Most of the time that you rock up at a location, you're not seeing it in the conditions, the ideal conditions that you would like to photograph that location in. And chances are, over the course of months or years of photography, we're gonna come across hundreds of scenes like that. So the question is, how do you organize the memory of all those scenes so that next time you do have good conditions for that particular location, you remember that location? And uh, I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do it. This is just the way I do it. So in short, as you can probably tell by the fact that I've got my phone out, my phone is integral to this process for me. And uh, basically, I have a collection of folders for different weather conditions. So I've got one for fog, uh, I've got one for sunrise, sorry, winter sunrise and summer sunrise, uh, winter sunset, summer sunset, rain, mood, flat light, snow. Did I say fog? Yes, yeah, so I've got half a dozen-ish folders. And within those folders, every time I get to a location where I think a photo opportunity would be present, in one of those conditions, I take a picture on my phone and immediately put it into the corresponding folder that I think would work for that photo location. And that has two advantages. You get to save it very quickly uh, and it's in the right spot. You don't need to worry about the fact that you've got to import an SD card and then put it in a different folder on your computer. Nothing like that, super simple on your phone. The added advantage of using your phone though is GPS. Because if you take a photo on your phone and it's not got GPS coordinates, then in a place like this, quite often a year later, a year after taking a photo, you can look at that photo and go, where's that? I mean, I can see it would be a good photo in fog, but how am I gonna find it? I've got no idea where I took that. But with a phone, all you've got to do is swipe up and you'll see a map of uh, the location and the exact specific point where you took that scouting photo. And uh, yeah, basically what that means is that I've got a folder of, for example, fog images, where I was at locations without fog, where I thought the images there would work with fog, and then the next time the forecast is fog, I've got a folder of images and locations that I can select from to uh, go out and take, hopefully, decent photos. And that is how I location scout. Uh, well, that's it. I'm calling it. I'm, I'm going to go back to the car since I can't really walk properly. I did get a couple of telephoto shots uh, of Trifan and the streaks of light on Trifan, which does look amazing, and a bit further down the valley. Oh, and does anybody know what this plane is? So here in the Ogwen Valley, you get lots of fighter jets and stuff flying through. And uh, it always looks and sounds amazing. Uh, I've never got a decent photo of it. That's one of my aims for this year. And also when restrictions allow, I'm gonna go down to the Mac Loop. Lots of people here in the UK will know what the Mac Loop is. Uh, basically, it's where they do even more training in fighter jets. So I'd love to go down there and try and get some photos, but I'll need to be able to walk for that. If uh, I was looking for any silver linings today, and I am, it's that this is probably my least favorite time of year for photography here in the UK because in winter the sun is so low that throughout the day you get kind of nice golden light. Not all day but there's kind of a long golden hour in the morning and a long golden hour 
uh, in the evening as well, or the afternoon really, the sun sets at about half three in December. Uh, and in the summer, the sun is so high that you can kind of shoot in any direction and it doesn't matter in the middle of the day. So if you get like a really nice flat light day, not everyone thinks that's really nice, but I quite like nice high banks of cloud, uh, then you can shoot all the greens surrounding you uh, in any direction and it doesn't really matter. Whereas this time of year, the sun is too high to give you golden light all throughout the day, but it's too low to give you all the options out for, um, for shooting in different directions. So uh, yeah, I often find March, April time quite tricky to shoot. And also there's no color anywhere, at least in autumn when the sun's doing similar things, there's plenty of color to shoot, but uh, you don't even get that this time of year. Although saying that, colour there is pretty cool. Anyway, hopefully I'll be fixed for autumn. I mean, hopefully I'll be fixed a long time before that. I'm, I'm thinking maybe two or three days I'll go home and find some peas, frozen peas, not just, not any peas. Ow. Well, I've, uh, I've limped pretty much most of the way back to the car now, but this is a good example of a photo which I think could work quite well in fog and that's mostly because of the lake so when there's fog typically there's not much wind when there's not much wind on a lake like this the lake will reflect the fog which will make it look well like it's not there and then the boathouse will just look like it's floating is what i'm imagining so yeah this is going straight in the fog folder nice yeah oh yes yeah, this could do summer sunrise. So the sun will come up from somewhere over there. I'll have to check photo pills to make sure. But then the light can stream in between the boathouse and Trifan. That'll look nice. Back in a couple of months. I don't know if you can hear that, but Emily's um, rollering next door. I say rollering, painting with a roller. Quite hard, by the sounds of it. I'm getting on. Have you got more paint on yourself or the walls? <laughs> yeah, it's splattered. I think I have too much on the uh, <laughs> brush <laughs> to begin with. Um, quick word about ads actually on my videos. Last week I uploaded a video and a few people commented saying that there were too many ads in the middle of videos. Um, there shouldn't be any ads in the middle of my videos. I'm very lucky on this channel to have sponsors and so I turned the mid-roll ads off. So if you see any ads in the middle of the video interrupting the video, please let me know because they shouldn't be there. Uh, what else? Oh, my knee. So it's been three days since I shot that footage in Ogwen and several bags of peas. And my knee feels an awful lot better actually so I'm gonna wait a few more days and then maybe try and go out into the hills and see how I get on um, I'm hopeful because it was random anyway a big thank you for watching and a big thank you also to today's video sponsor Skillshare so Skillshare is an amazing online learning platform full of thousands of classes and all kinds of different creative pursuits and you can literally learn anything from how to use Photoshop to how to care for household plants. Uh, there's all manner of different things on there and if you're stuck at home at the moment wondering what kind of things you can photograph, I would recommend a class in still life photography uh, that I've been checking out recently where you can get ideas and inspiration on how to turn fairly mundane things into really nice photos. So yeah, check that out. The first thousand people to do so in the link in my description will get access to a free trial on Skillshare. Uh, and then after that, if you carry on your membership, then you'll pay less than $10 a month to do so. So a big thank you to Skillshare for their continued support. And uh, I'll see you next time when hopefully I'll be able to walk.